<sighs> well, since it's spooky time of the year, I think I'm gonna make some spooky stuff. And the nice thing about that is I've already made some stuff this year that could easily be spooky with just a few changes. So for this video, I'm just gonna take a few projects that I already did this year and modify them so that they can uh, be high-tech Halloween props. Maybe the first one's kind of obvious, but I'm gonna do some additional work on the animatronic hand uh, to make it, you know, a Halloween animatronic hand. Why not? I mean, this thing was basically made to be a Halloween prop already. In fact, that is what I had in mind when I built it. So, uh, what can we change to make this thing cooler? Well, first off, like any great Halloween animatronic, it needs to trigger based on motion. So I'm gonna add a motion sensor to it uh, to trigger to do its animations. The other thing is that right now, this thing can only be controlled using the desktop app that I built, and it needs to be more of a standalone prop, I think, uh, separated from the computer. So uh, what I wanna do is just add a button that will let me cycle through animations that I've already recorded while it was connected to the computer, and then I can pick which one I want to trigger when it detects motion. And, of course, I'm gonna have to make it look spooky somehow. Honestly, I think this one's gonna be pretty easy, and I should be able to get something going real fast here. Uh, so let's go take a look. If you want to detect people moving, then you're gonna wanna get a PIR sensor, which is what I've got right here. It doesn't just detect movement, it also factors in heat changes, so as long as you're not dead, like I am, then this is the perfect thing for seeing a person move. This particular sensor just goes high whenever it detects motion, and then after some time, if the motion has stopped being detected, it will go low again. Uh, and I just wired it up to a simple circuit here that whenever it detects motion, it will turn on this LED, and uh, that's it. So let's give it a quick test. Okay, I'm going to wave my hand around above it. So I just want to use a circuit like this to trigger when the animatronic hand starts moving. I ended up adding two buttons to this thing. This top one is a button to start playback, and this one here is to switch which animation we're going to play. I also reconfigured the code so that uh, after it plays back the full animation one time, it stops instead of playing it uh, forever on a loop. And to demonstrate, if I push this button here, one time playback. And we can switch the file, play again. I also wrote some handy libraries for handling buttons in Arduino, so uh, if it's something you do often, you might want to check those out. Now I just need to add the PIR sensor on this thing, and uh, basically that'll take over the function of the playback button, so when it detects motion, it'll start playing. And it's on there. Here's the sensor. Plenty of extra wire because I don't know exactly where I'm going to mount that sensor yet. And uh, yeah, plugged into the microcontroller over here. As you can see, if it detects motion, it plays, uh, and then it stops, and if it continuously detects motion, then it will just keep on playing. I did go ahead and connect this thing so that it'll run off of battery power instead of USB. Now the last thing to do is just make it look spooky. It looks just like my own hand. Now, if I could just trigger it. Except the battery's dying a little bit. Well, we'll charge that up later. The next project I want to modify might not be quite as obvious as the first, but it's going to be my auto-aiming connect-based turret. I mean, think about it. I have something here that can point right at a person. There's gotta be some potential there. And sure, it would be scary if a gun were pointed at you, but it wouldn't really be spooky. So what could I put on here that would be spooky? Well, how about something that looks right at you? Uh, how about an eyeball that looks right at you? Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna put an eyeball on this thing and it's gonna look right at you. I think the software is gonna be almost the same as it was. Uh, the tricky part's just gonna be 
figuring out the mechanical design to get, you know, a spherical eyeball uh, to look at you using servos instead of, you know, this uh, pan tilt bracket thing that I've got for the gun. This is a rollerball bottle that I got on Amazon. As you can see, top of it is a little rolly ball. And we can just take that off as well. Trust me, it spins freely. My bone fingers are just a little slippery, okay? What's that you say? This eyeball is too little? It's not gonna be cool and creepy? Well, fortunately, this is not the eyeball. This is the eyeball right here. Okay, I've got the basic eye mechanism put together so you can see how it works. All right, so I got the roller ball back here. It's attached to the styrofoam dome using a Dunkin' Donuts straw. That's important, you better do it that way. And the whole thing is just on a heavy wire base. Uh, you could use a wire coat hanger if you had one for that. And just being weighted down with some Allen wrenches for now, that's not permanent. Okay, and as you can see, I can now move this eyeball in all directions as if it's looking around. So up next I just gotta attach like some rods, I think one on the side and one on the top or bottom uh, and then those are gonna connect to the servos and when the servos turn it should you know turn the eye and I'll do my best to get it calibrated so that uh, you know one degree of servo turn roughly equals one degree of eyeball rotation uh, hopefully that'll work out. Real quick, here's a front-facing view, just using a thumbtack to represent the pupil. Right, we've got the mechanism completed, and I've added the connect to a new base. Now, this thing is set up a lot differently than the, uh, the gun version. Uh, plus, I can keep the gun uh, stuff intact by just, you know, putting it all on its own base. Uh, so what we've got here is a couple of micro servos this time, and you might recognize that they are connected to Kinex uh, toy things, you know, sort of like Legos but different. And then those are connected to some wire coat hanger pieces which connect to the actual eye. So observe if I move this, turns the eye. And similarly, there's another one over here uh, mounted at the vertical angle to do the up and down motion. It's exactly the same. So I guess it's time to plug everything in and uh, I think there's gonna be a few minor adjustments to make to the code. And then, uh, yeah, we can see how this thing works. And then, you know, after that, it'll just be making it look good. Everything is wired up. And I didn't do a tripod mount this time because I don't plan on putting this thing on a tripod. Uh, you know, I'll figure out where it's going to be mounted when it gets closer to Halloween, but somewhere, you know, for it to actually scare people and be more discreet than a tripod sitting in a room. Uh, so for now, I just stacked it up on some bins. And you know what? Let me see if I can get my wife to do like an over-the-shoulder shot. And then, uh, you know, you can see it in action and how well it's tracking. I went ahead and made a uh, different scene for tracking the eye and that way I can adjust settings as I need to without it affecting the uh, original Kinect stuff. First thing I did is change the uh, joint to track from heart to head uh, so that it'll appear like it's looking into your eyes, that's the idea. I also adjusted the Kinect motor offset. Uh, this is based on the position of 
uh, where the eyeball is relative to the connect. And finally, I added this uh, angle multiplier. This was kind of the quickest thing I could do to account for the fact that I'm now converting, you know, like a weird linear motion into a rotation. Well, really, it's a rotation into a linear motion back to a rotation. Uh, and none of it is perfect. So it just seemed like it wasn't looking right at me. So I just decided to uh, multiply the angles by some number. So for instance, if uh, the angle I want to go to is 45 degrees and I set my multiplier to two, then I'm actually going to go to 90 degrees. So uh, it's just going to scale up how um, much each angle change is worth um, for as far as the motors are concerned. And uh, after just playing around with it for a little bit, this seemed like very close. It feels like it's looking at me. So I'm going to stick with this for now. It's a two times multiplier for the uh, horizontal and a 1.5 times multiplier for the uh, uh, vertical. I also went ahead and uh, disabled the uh, firing and the ability to disable with the secret gesture, if you remember that. Let's see, and I cleared out all the audio clips. Uh, so they it just won't play any audio and uh, yeah, so basically that means it doesn't even though behind the scenes It's still, you know, keeping track of the, the hands raised state or anything like that uh, As far as the user is concerned all it's doing is looking at them uh, at all times. So uh, That's pretty much what I want and I don't want to change this anymore and you know make it too complicated to go back to the uh, Gun turret if I ever want to in the future. So I'm gonna stop it right there. My wife was kind enough to paint and decorate the eye, and she even made uh, an eyelid out of paper mache, which then got upholstered with some fabric that has sort of a leathery skin kind of look to it. Okay, so this is nearly the final version here. Uh, with, now it has this eyelid around it with this fabric that looks kind of like some kind of weird reddish skin and eyeball on the connect, of course. Oh, and I uh, wrapped the eye in plastic wrap after it was painted so that it has kind of this glossy look to it. I just wanted to show how I mounted the uh, eyelid. It's just on this admittedly flimsy armature made out of some more uh, wire coat hangers. Uh, so it's just got a piece stuck into the paper mache on this side, another one on this side, and then those come down and are stapled to the base here. Yeah, so same thing here at the bottom. That's it. Um, so like I said, it's kind of flimsy, but it holds it up and it's adjustable by, you know, it's easy to bend these pieces and and kind of get it situated where you want it and uh, I think the last thing I'm gonna do not sure if it'll make it into the video but uh, I think I'm gonna just try to wrap some black fabric here around the base and drape some black fabric you know sort of behind here covering up as much of the uh, wire armatures and stuff like that as I can and then I'm gonna stick the whole thing up on a shelf in our living room uh, with a laptop hidden behind it and the circuitry and all that and uh, yeah it's just gonna be it's gonna be there but, you know, I want to get this video out before Halloween, so I'm not sure if all that's going to make it in. Uh, maybe I'll try to post a clip, if not. Regardless, uh, let me just go ahead and do one last demo with the eyelid installed, and uh, that will probably be it for this one. All right, I'd say that pretty much wraps it up. If you were spooked during this video, then please uh, leave a like or feel free to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And uh, oh, by the way, in my last video, the motorized potentiometer part two, I mentioned that the next video would be uh, in cooperation with PCBWay and due to some issues with other components needed for that project, uh, it has been delayed. So this is not that video. That video is still to come. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, boo or whatever. Um, uh, happy Halloween!